Good morning all. Now today I'm looking at a DC to DC converter with a buck boost topology. Now this is slightly more expensive than the uh, usual sort of stuff I buy. This was about £16. But it does have some very interesting properties. So with this being a buck boost topology uh, converter, the output, which is here, can be either less than uh, the same as or greater than the input which is on this side. Uh, so this is the controller chip here. This is an LTC3780. Um, this is a double wound inductor, fairly chunky thing. And there are four N-channel MOSFETs here because this is a synchronous DC to DC converter. So here's the item on eBay. Now the description is pretty dreadful. LTC3780, automatic lifting pressure, constant voltage, step up, step down, 10 amp, 130 watts. Uh, this was $24.80, which is £16.37. There was a little bit of postage in addition to that. Actually, I think I got mine slightly cheaper than that. And this is from Jury China. Now, this unit starts to make a lot more sense if you look at the data sheet. It's by Linear Technology. It's the LTC3780, and it's a high-efficiency, synchronous, four-switch buck boost controller. And here are some of the features. Single inductor architecture allows V in above, below, or equal to V out. Wide V in range, 4 volts to 36 volts and synchronous rectification up to 98% efficiency. And if we look at the efficiency graph, we can see that uh, maximum efficiency, top of the curve here, is kind of between V in of 10 to 15 volts, which goes some way to explain why one of the applications listed is automotive systems. Now I've turned the converter upside down because uh, I want to have a left to right uh, energy flow here. I've put 12 volts to the input, so that's coming from my solar power system, and we have an output blue LED. So let's have a look at uh, what the buck boost topology means in practice. Well, it means that uh, with my 12 volts coming in, it's actually 12.4 at the moment, the output can be anything from, well, less than a volt, 0.8 volts there, and then if I start winding this, we can take it up to 12 volts where the output is uh, the same as the input. But then I can just keep going. Now it's in boost mode. I can wind this thing all the way up to its maximum voltage, which on this unit, okay, that's ticking now, 28.4 volts. So this transition um, through the point where V in equals V out, uh, currently about 12.4 volts, and then above that voltage, so it's now in boost mode, and then back through that one-to-one -one voltage conversion back into buck mode seems quite seamless. But in fact, what the chip's doing while this is happening is very complex. So here's a simplified diagram of the output switches. These are the four MOSFETs that are on the, uh, the board with the inductor running between them. And uh, if you look at the switching diagram here, or at least the uh, boost and buck region diagram, in the buck region, uh, switch D is on, C is off, and A and B, PWM. In the boost region, A is on, B is off, and C and D go into PWM. And then there's this buck boost region between the two where all four MOSFETs are switching in quite a complex sequence. So further down the data sheet you can see here that in buck mode two of the MOSFETs are fixed and the other two are pulse width modulating. In boost mode it changes, uh, different MOSFETs are fixed, different MOSFETs are switching. And then in the mid region, the buck boost uh, region, We've got these uh, quite complex diagrams where all four MOSFETs are switching and it kind of flips over from uh, 
where V in is slightly above V out to where V in is slightly below V out. Now just take a look at this diagram again. You can see that V in comes through one N-channel MOSFET through this big chunky uh, inductor and through another N-channel MOSFET and that's it. That's the energy path. So it's a high current path and uh, with the high efficiencies and high current, that's what makes this in, in uh, this converter quite special. So another quick look at the board here. Here are the four MOSFET switches, which are in that sort of almost like an H-bridge configuration. Here's the series inductor. So the current flow is simply through one of these MOSFETs, the inductor, and then another MOSFET. Now there's nothing new about uh, buck boost converters, of course. If we look at Wikipedia, it says that there are two different topologies are called buck boost converter. The inverting topology, and this one's very, very simple. It's simply this, uh, a MOSFET switch, an inductor, and a diode. But the problem is that the output of this converter is a polarity reversal of the input. So the output at this point up here is negative with respect to ground, and that's not very convenient. Uh, the other one they mention is a buck step-down converter combined or followed by a boost step-up converter, and those also exist. So here's a buck boost converter on eBay. I suppose it should really be called a boost buck converter. Here's the input. It first goes through an LM2577 boost converter. The output of that is then smooth and then fed into an LM2596 buck converter and that goes to the output. The potentiometer controls the output voltage of the buck converter. So it's simply two DC to DC converters, one following the other mounted on one printed circuit board. Now there is also the SEPIC converter, the single-ended primary inductor converter. Here's the uh, diagram of it on Wikipedia. Now in common with the very simple buck boost converter, this also has two inductors. It's quite complicated. It also has this series pass capacitor. So this capacitor has to be something quite special because all the energy of the system is flowing through that capacitor. So here's a SEPIC converter, uh, the type you can get on eBay. You can see here the two inductors and that series capacitor it has been implemented here with uh, multi-layer ceramics, presumably to get very low ESR, equivalent series resistance. And uh, here's that SEPIC converter on eBay, very cheap, £2.59, and it has a similar range of uh, input to output voltage, but of course it doesn't have the uh, ultra high efficiency or the high current handling of the LTC3780. So here's a 21 watt, 24 volt um, vehicle brake light bulb. This is the sort of thing that would be uh, fitted in a truck because they have 24 volt systems. So if I plug this into the converter, uh, still set for 12 volts output, um, we get the light comes on relatively dim. I can now boost the output of the converter up to its maximum. About 28 volts, 24 volt bulbs won't have a problem with 28 volts, they should be good for about 30. And there we've got 12 volts being converted to 28 volts and we've got a nice bright vehicle bulb. Now if you do a search on eBay for LTC3780, there are two types currently of this DC to DC converter available. I bought this one because it has three potentiometers, which to me meant R current control. This version only has one potentiometer, but this version here is rated at up to 14 amps. The one I bought is only rated at up to 10 amps. There's no information provided with this thing, or very little, uh, only what's in the eBay listing. And if you search for this WD2002SJ uh, part number, nothing comes up. So you have to fiddle about uh, yourself to try and work out what these pots do. This one is obviously voltage, we did that one before. And then I determined that the middle one is current because this has a very rapid effect on brightness, but fairly near the bottom of its range. And that quite rapidly turns the lamp right off. So that's definitely the current control. And then there's a third pot, 
Not entirely sure what this is, but often these boards are set up for charging lithium cells. So I'm hoping this is some sort of cutoff setting uh, for when the lithium cell is drawing uh, a tenth of its nominal current. Now, what about using this for charging these uh, headway lithium ion phosphate cells? The maximum charge voltage for these is uh, 3.65 volts. Uh, so for eight of those, that's 29.2 volts. Now this thing only went up to 28.4 volts. So we'd be undercharging these, or at least charging them at slightly below their maximum voltage. I mean, that's not a huge problem, but this isn't quite right for charging these. I mean, I might try it. It's just a little bit under voltage. In terms of current, it's fine. This has a maximum current of 10 amps, and these things are 10, 10 amp hours. So we could charge these at 1C. And because this thing has a current limiting potentiometer, it would make um, a perfectly good LED driver if it weren't for the fact that most of these high power LEDs have 10 LEDs in a column. And that means that they need something like 33 or 34 volts to drive them. This is a 30 watt LED. And uh, the same thing applies to this 100 watt LED, it's uh, 10 LEDs in a column, and this thing only goes up to uh, just under 30 volts. So it's not really gonna make a very good uh, high power LED driver. But for applications where high efficiency is important, like anything to do with solar power or charging those lithium cells, this would make uh, an ideal DC converter. It would also make quite a good bench power supply if the only source of power on your bench is 12 volts, like I have. So by hooking up uh, a couple of voltmeters, uh, this one's measuring my input voltage, 12.34 volts. This one's measuring the output voltage. And uh, once again, if I put the pot adjuster in there, that can be set to voltages both above the input voltage and below the input voltage. And if you put a, a few uh, potentiometers and wire them into these points on the board, you can make quite a nice bench power supply, continuously variable between one and 29 volts with a 10 amp current handling. Now, just a couple of other things. Um, a synchronous DC to DC converter doesn't need shock key diodes, but there are a couple here. There's one here and there's one here. Um, these two up here with the capacitors are bootstrap circuits to provide a high gate voltage for these high side MOSFETs. So that explains what they are. But these two diodes here are explained further down the data sheet. Um, I'll just bring in the board itself. You can see those two diodes either side of the inductor sitting between the pairs of MOSFETs. Uh, there. So here's the explanation. Shock key diodes across the synchronous switch D and synchronous switch B are not required but provide a lower drop during the dead time. The addition of these shock key diodes will typically improve peak efficiency by 1 to 2 percent at 400 kilohertz. Uh, and just a couple of other things of note on this circuit board. There's a rather nice miniature uh, 15 amp fuse here in a fuse holder. And then behind the four MOSFETs and the inductor, there is a heat sink, which is just a slab of aluminium. And presumably there are thermal vias underneath these MOSFETs, uh, perhaps not so much under the inductor, feeding heat through. There's a little um, silicone pad there through to this uh, aluminium heatsink, but uh, I've only run this thing up to about one amp and I didn't notice any uh, temperature increase on either the heatsink or the inductor or the MOSFETs for that matter. So there it is, that's a first look at this uh, DC to DC converter, this buck boost converter with uh, synchronous rectification, meaning very high efficiency, high current capacity, uh, based on the uh, LTC3780 controller chip and employing this 
four switch synchronous uh, controller topology. Cheerio.